Our first stop on the Florida Historic Golf Trail takes us through Miami to the legendary Miami Springs Golf Course. The course is located about a five iron from the Miami International Airport, but you would never know it on this early morning. A lush green backdrop to a symphony of tropical South Florida birds and wildlife. Sit back, we're about to take flight at the Miami Springs Golf Club. Oldest golf course in uh, Miami, Florida, built in 1923. I worked for the PGA Tour Tournament Players Club Division and we built a lot of golf courses for golf course communities. This is uh, probably one of the original that uh, ever was thought of was a golf course community and it stayed that way and it's withstood the uh, test of time. This club is steeped in history, a true original a golf community from another time that has put its stamp on the history of golf in America. Every course has its catalyst, and at Miami Springs it was aviation pioneer Glenn Curtis, whose unique Southwest style mansion sits just off the fifth tee box. Where did you get that at? Ah, oh, no, here we go. Here we go. No, where did you get that? <laughs> in his wildest imagination, he couldn't have predicted the historic journey of this course and its continued importance among the community and members of Miami Springs. This golf course was built by a group of players, had nowhere to go, and they were called the Miami Coconuts. And they pitched in and they came up with 40, I believe $44,000. They had to borrow a bunch of other money from Mr. Glenn Curtis, and he found the track to land. And it started off with nine holes by Tub Martin, and then it, and then it was spread into 18 holes. And it was originally called the Hialeah Golf Club. And later it became the Miami Springs Golf Club. People came here to Miami Springs because it was friendly and it felt like home. This was a place you could truly call your home. And when people came, they were treated like it was home. And they could have played anywhere else. The baseball players and all the other players could afford to play anywhere else in Miami they wanted to play. In golf courses that were in a lot better condition, but they chose to play here. And uh, we're glad they did because it contributed to the history of this golf course and this city and the city of Miami in general. 10 used to be number one back in the day. And we had a professional who, who worked as a starter here when he got to be in his 80s named Tommy Sullivan. And Tommy played with Arnold Palmer in his first professional tournament in 1954. Arnie didn't make the cut, and that was the first tee. So that's where Arnold hit his first professional tee shot. And rumor has it that he was broke trying to get back to Pennsylvania, and everybody had to chip in. But you saw what he became. That's yeah, right, the king. The king. The king of golf. Yeah, baby. On this day, we hit the course with two of its members and ambassadors local teaching pros Jeff Vance and Eugene Clapp. This is part of the hole that people use as their green space in Miami Springs. You can see the, the jogging path goes around the golf course on the right hand side and there are joggers out here all hours, night and day, people walking their dogs, kids on bicycles. This really gets used and the people in the Springs love their green space. Good job, man. Looks like you're hitting it pretty well, man. Member Eugene Clapp heads up Renegades of Golf, which essentially opens the door to golf for a new generation of local golfers and also serves as a local historian of another chapter in the Miami Springs history. Now, Springs was the first course to even allow any African American golfers to play on Mondays or anything else. So they were progressive in that respect. However, to open up every day, it was a sign of the times it wasn't going to happen. What really catapulted it to be open every day was 1953, when they moved what was known as the North-South Tournament from Jacksonville, Florida, to Miami Springs and became the permanent home. The Miami Open gave this city a look at some of the great champions of the day in Sam Snead, Gene Sarenzen, and Byron Nelson. But the move at the North-South Tournament here in 1953 altered the landscape of golf in Florida forever. The locals could now see African-American golfers like the great Ted Rhodes and Charlie Sifford. What an impact that makes on your life, just knowing that you walked on the first golf course. You're a part of the first golf course that allowed um, African-Americans to play. That, to me, is in Florida. That, that to me, is just, it's just priceless information. 
Lori Bland is the superintendent here at Miami Springs and is a groundbreaker in her own right. There you go. Since coming over from Doral, Laurie has brought a change in the landscape and restored the course to its pristine past and then some. She leads a great service team at the club that rivals any private course in the area with exceptionally designed and well-maintained greens. They have elephants buried in them. They're, they're special greens. Each of them are unique to the whole. Uh, varying in size, but even more so in the, the complexity of maintaining them. So the, it's, a, it's, a it's a nice challenge every day to come in and know that, that each green is different and they just behave. So just like having 20 different children, <laughs> having to manage all of them. Number 12 was probably the longest par three in South Florida for a long time. There's one at Doral that might be a little bit longer, but at 248 from the regular blue tees and 265 from the tips, that's a pretty long par three. Another great par three on the back nine is number 16, and that's actually our signature hole, which I think is the prettiest hole in the golf course. It takes a precise iron, and the green has an awful lot of slope and it's pretty small considering that the other greens in Dade County are about maybe a third bigger than every green here. So as the round nears the end at Miami Springs, we are reminded what it's all about here. A great finish to a wonderful course. One is reminded of the many historic walks taken down this 18th from its storied past. But it's the general friendliness of this place, old school and millenniums alike, golfers having a great time, sharing a few laughs, and making a few putts. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Look at that. We'll take that all day. Good job, you know. That's the way we do it in the spring. <laughs> uh, everybody comes here, everybody gets along, everybody has a good time and a lot of friendships are made here. Nothing better than that. And that's what this golf course is all about, is friendship and a nice, fun place to play. We try to make the staff as courteous as we can, the rates as reasonable as we can. It's a true municipal golf course. This is not a resort golf course. This is a municipal golf course, and we think it's one of the best in the state. The Miami Springs Golf Course, our first stop on the Florida Historic Golf Trail, this time, on Golfing the World.